Hey everybody, this is Brian from PB Homesteading. Thought I would take you guys out and do a little yard tour of the uh, garden boxes that we've got all of our squash and tomatoes planted into now. Alright, so let's go ahead and head down the deck. Now, all the tomatoes that used to be down here on the uh, patio, they're all out, planted now. So we've got these garden boxes all set up. So you can see we've got our squash, and then we've got our eggplants. I'll put in the ground in here, all kind of staggered. And these squash will grow, you know, and they'll bush out. And then the eggplants will get up to be about, you know, that tall. So they'll be all spread out through there. They look pretty happy with the uh, automatic watering system that comes overhead. So and I did have to put some sluggo out because I'll show you one of the squash plants that the uh, slugs decided to take out last night. But uh, you can see the, the bees are coming out and there's been quite a few of them flying around the eggplants. These are some of the last squash that we planted or seeded inside the, uh, the grow tent. So they're a little smaller, so I put them in the front. And I gave them a nice dose of uh, worm compost around each of these. So that way that'll you know, drop right down into the soil around those and help those give them a good kickstart to grow. You can see our, uh, our apples are starting to form on this columnar apple. There's some of our rye grass. I'll let that go to seed so that way the uh, the birds will have something to eat. There's some of the apples. There's a bunch of them up here. And then we've got another garden box here. More squash. More tomatoes. That's one of the things we did this year. Instead of doing the uh, tomatoes in a bag, I'm going to do a tomato in a pot. And then I'm going to do a tomato surrounded in that little rock garden over there. You can see how fast that one grows. Like that there. And then all the tomatoes that are down here in this lower yard are all the small tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes. Uh, these are all the, you know, Matt's Wilds and the Montesinos, F1. And so we have the small tomatoes down here. I believe they're the small, all small tomatoes. Except for, you know, the ones in the middle over there. Or on the ends, those are the pink boar. I think these are also pink boar here. But like the big runs, like the uh, Moscovich and the Crimson Sprinter, which are a mid-sized tomato, they're all uh, they're all in the upper yard in the uh, the bigger boxes. So we put those up above. And then uh, you know, here's one of the eggplants that actually has an egg plant flower that has got a fruit set. That little guy back there. So that's pretty cool. I got a bunch of the stuff I still got to knock off some of these I was a little pissed off this morning when the uh, came out and saw one of my squash plants that was this one of the smaller ones in the upper boxes it got decimated by slugs so I just kind of came out here and just tossed out the uh, the sluggo and then inside these boxes I thought you guys might find this would be kind of cool I talked about it last week but I've got the uh, the beans are back there and the peas and then I've got three squash plants and then I've got a tomato plant in each one of these uh, bean you know, hutches, that I called them, because they have that hutch that goes over the top here for the uh, scarlet runner beans. So that'll be pretty cool there. But then we'll have a tomato in there, we'll have all the squash, and then we'll have beans. So it'll be like its own little garden in a box. So instead of a garden in a bag this year, we'll be doing a garden in a box. So that'll be kind of cool. Looks like I need to clean out the bird bath. It's looking pretty, uh, pretty dirty. I didn't get a chance to do that yet today. And out here in the yard, we've got uh, the salmon berries have actually been starting to bloom. We've got the uh, pears on this little dwarf starting to set. There's some there, some there. There's another one up there. And I put some tomatoes, some of the extra tomatoes we had. I put them out here in the uh, right next to the clover patch. So. Everything else seems to be doing pretty well. The tomatoes we planted last weekend, they're over there. In that box, they seem to be doing really well. Still got the peach curl issue on these trees that I've been trying to fight. Uh, I gave another spraying of the, uh, the compost tea. And I also took uh, two big five gallon buckets and I was using my compost tea and I dumped a bunch, a bunch of it right down around the base, you know, around that root zone so that way it can really start to suck that up and help it fight off any of that. Uh, leaf curl, but I think for these other peach trees, like the one I'll show you up here above, we're going to end up just cutting it out, 
and replacing it with some of the uh, pear trees that I started from seed that I stratified uh, last year. I'll go up here and see the mint. You can see the spearmint's doing really well. I mean, if you get a you know back shot here, you can see how much we really have going. So we're gonna start cutting this, I think next weekend. I told Paula to just start coming out here and cutting as much as she wants to, to dehydrate. And this is all the uh, chocolate mint. It's got a little bit different leaf shape. That's how you can tell the difference. And also these have a, uh, when they get more mature, they have a brown stalk. The other ones have a real green stalk. Dendrons. Well, not really dendrons. These are those variegated bugala that I uh, propagated last year. Looks like we got one, two, three. That one there may be coming up. Four. We got five over there. So that'll be good. Yeah, see, look at this peach tree. This thing has just got so much of that leaf curl on it. It's about as bad as the one in the front yard. I just don't think it's going to make it. Here's our lilac bush. It's looking really healthy. It's just flowering out because remember last week, this is the one that was uh, just starting to flower. The other one is starting to drop most of its leaves, but it was a really nice scent. Paula came out, took a few cuttings in the house. There's the tomatoes here. And the uh, stair step boxes, they seem to be doing really well. Cover crops really growing and keeping that soil covered. Let's go up here. There's the, there's the victim of the slug. So I put some seed in there, so hopefully we'll get a germination of another summer squash there. And these are all the bigger tomatoes. There's one that's already set. I think these are the crimson sprinters I put in this box. And over here is the, the Moskvich. There's a the squash there. Neighbors probably think I'm nuts out here walking around with the camera. There's some more squash down there. There's the one little lone pepper. And I put in some drip irrigation last yesterday back there for the uh, the beans, for the bean hutches. Put in some tomatoes. I believe these are all the pink pores as well. You can see the comfrey is doing really well. Lemon balm. Little patches of lemon balm we've got. I haven't seen any honey berries yet. Ooh. Hot dang. There we go. That's a honey berry, guys. See that? Oh gosh, those are good. I don't know if there's any more yet. Oh, there's some more. Look at that. You can see there's some more forming up right there. These things are really good. They're like a blueberry. I mean, they're they're pretty good. So I encourage you guys to get a couple of these bushes for your yard. They're really hardy too. I guess I should leave those for Paula. If I take too many of those, she'll know I came down here and stole some of the bushes because I know that her favorite are these gooseberries. Those are the little gooseberries we grow. We've got two of those bushes and I usually don't get any of these because she'll play walking around with the dogs in the mornings and she'll come by here and she'll pick all of them and then tell me that, you know, she had to share with the pugs. <laughs> Here's our spaghetti squash. Still got, you can see that the slugs were starting to get in here and get on these limbs, these leaves as well. So I came in here and Threw a bunch on the ground. Got to shake it off here. But you can see it's already starting to vine up, which is good. Nice and healthy. And you can see all the cover crop. After taking off the, uh, the cover, I kind of just took a little, uh, I don't know, it's not really a hoe, it's a, one of those ones that has the little loop, metal loop. And I just uh, took a hold of it and then. Uh, you know, 
kind of skidded it around. Didn't really till it or anything, but uh, it helps loosen things up. And over here, I kind of centered it in the, uh, the middle of the bed. And then I planted, and then I scooted everything back around the bases of the plants, so that way all that nutrients going to just drop right in there. I'm probably going to, after this grows up a little bit, come in and throw a cover crop inside here. But that's kind of the walk. Oh, and that's all the wildflowers. Some of the wildflowers I planted. So they're all coming up nice, except you can see the, uh, the moles coming come out of there a little bit once in a while. That's all right. I figure those are little in-ground rototillers. But then that one there, that was from Benny the Pug. He decided he wanted to do a little skitty kicky bury my pee dance. <laughs> all right, well, that's kind of a little walk around the backyard. All right, this has been Brian from B&B Homesteading. Hope you guys have a great week. <laughs> Bye.